Oh, hello, beautiful souls. Happy full moon blessing in Leo. I'm so excited for tonight. It's going to be dope AF. Whew, I got some stuff for you that I channeled today during my meditation. And we're going to round um, off our time together with some journal prompts and some sound healing. It's going to be amazing. So if you guys aren't driving and you can say, hey, just in the chat, say, hey, how's your day going? Um, I feel like, I swear to you, I feel like Mercury is still in retrograde. I feel like everyone is so whacked out, um, including myself. Like I feel a little off today, um, just energetically. And I'm like, well, you know, it is the full moon. So I'm giving myself a little bit of grace, but my moon sign is actually in Leo. So I'm even like more affected when um, my sign is, is like what the moon is actually in. I don't know if I'm the only one here that feels like that, but the moon, like I said, tonight is in Leo. Just letting some girls in. Um, I wrote some notes on my phone. So if I'm looking down, it's not because I'm ignoring you. It's because I just wanna make sure that I stay on course because I channeled a bunch of stuff today. Okay, so if you, hey, what's up? I like it. What's up, Karen? What's up, girlfriend? God, I'm gonna fucking kill my husband today. He is playing the worst music downstairs and I'm sitting on the floor of my studio and it's like bumping through my vagina and it's really aggravating me and I wanna punch him in his face. Maybe I'll do that later. Oh, I'm glowing. I think it's my new lashes. So you guys know I've literally had extensions, lash extensions since they came out in like 2007. And then during COVID, like obviously no one was open. So I let all my lashes fall out. And I just like looked at myself in the mirror the other day and I was like, who are you? Go get your fucking shit together, bitch. <laughs> so I think it's my lashes, but I do appreciate you saying that I'm glowing. I appreciate you so much. Okay. So Leo guys, it's a fixed sign. Okay. Which means it's hardcore shit. I'm an Aquarius. My birthday is on Friday and I'm the last day of the whole Aquarian time. And that is also a fixed sign. When you're in a fixed sign, the energy is just like exacerbated through the roof. Okay. So a lot of the signs that are not fixed, a lot of the signs that are a little bit more mutable, they're a little bit more easy to sway, but Leo is a fixed sign, Aquarius is a fixed sign. We just are like hardcore. We are hardcore. Yes, Leo is a fixed sign. It's not a mutable sign. It doesn't move. We are, you know, Leo is just like Aquarians. We are very like, this is the way it is. This is how I roll. You cannot pull me off my balance. Like, no, 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 right? I know you're a Leo too. I'm like surrounded by Leos. I actually really do love Leos. And like I said, my moon sign is in Leo. Um, everyone here should know their fixed sign, their moon sign, and at least their ascending sign. The way you learn those signs is you actually, there's like a sign calculator. You just have to know your time of birth, the exact time, your date of birth and where you were born. And you can get your fixed sign. Um, mostly everybody knows like what their fixed sign is. Um, and then knowing your ascending sign and knowing your moon sign. It's just really cool to know. I mean, you like my astrologer, my astrologer does all of my stuff. Like I know what every house of everything is. Oh my God, you're an Aries and Aries. Oh, Capricorn rising. That's interesting energy. I like that. You know, I love you know, you're the only Aries I like. <laughs> Aries are like my arch nemesis. I don't know why I've had the worst Aries. And I bet there's like other people on here. Really, Katie? I think I'm an Aries too. So if you're an Aries and I like you, like you're proving me wrong right now. Kim says, how do you find out your birth time if your mother can't remember? The only suggestion that I would give you is to call the actual hospital that you were born and see if they still keep the archive records. Um, but isn't that horrible? I don't think that they really get, like, I don't think that people cared because like my husband, even though he was adopted, so it makes it a little bit harder. Um, he doesn't know his either. And like, it wasn't on his birth uh, certificate either. So that sucks. 
But when you find out your actual time, you can find out a plethora of things. You know, you can find out obviously all your different signs. Um, it's really hard to get an astrological reading from an astrologer when you don't know your exact time of birth. Um, like they can obviously kind of guesstimate, but it's just never going to be spot on unless you know that birth time. So um, the Leo being a fixed sign, like if anybody knows anything about Leo energy, like the Leo energy is, they are like the, they're the morning star. They are the roaring lion. They are the sovereign. They are like the regal queen. That's like the energy like of Leo. Okay. So let's just, let's just put that out there. And anyone that knows a Leo knows like Leos are like, darling, come to the show. And maybe after I will sign some autographs for you peasants, like that's the energy of Leo, which I am here for it. I am here for that energy. And I think that everyone should take a little bit of Leo into their heart and start to step up a little bit more like that. My mom and boyfriend are Leos. Monique says my sister and Karina are both Leos as well. And Leos can be hard. They can be like really stubborn. Um, they can treat you like peasanty once in a while. Um, it's almost like we're all like living just to take care of the Leos, you know, like that can be the energy, but at the, on the other hand, Leos are so magnetic, they're fiery, they're inspirational, they're motivational. They're really amazing, amazing energy, like amazing energy. Okay. So the, the full moon tonight, and this is just like what I have channeled and maybe you guys are feeling the same way. So if you're feeling the same way, like feel free more, like just to let me know in the chat. But so the energy is like about shining your light. Okay. We, for this full moon, cannot let anyone or anything dim our light. We have to show up with passion. We have to show up with fire. We have to show up with fury right? Because remember, the Leos are the regal queens. So they're showing up and they're like, just, they don't give a fuck, like whose eyes they blind. They're just like, I'm the queen, move aside. They're also the roaring lion, right? So they're like, listen to my voice. They're using their throat chakra. They're really stepping into their power. And the other thing that's really interesting too, about this, about this full moon is it's about passion, and in not passion for outside people or things, passion for yourself. And this Leo full moon is also about loving hard, really loving hard. And I'm not talking about loving anyone else except yourself. Um, so many of the healing sessions that I've been doing lately, everyone's blocks are because they're so hell bent on helping everyone else and they're not helping themselves. And they're so passionate about helping everyone else, but they're not passionate about helping themselves. And they're so loving to everyone else and they don't even love themselves. And that is not healthy. That is trauma and that is flawed and that is egoic, right? So again, shining our light is the passion and is the fire, right? So, you know, when the sun rises every morning, does the sun give a fuck who it blinds? Does the sun care as you're driving to, you know, you're commuting to work in the morning, the sun is glaring in your eyes. Is the sun like, oh shit, sorry, bitch. I didn't mean to like blind you on the way to your like shitty little cubicle job. No, it doesn't give a fuck. So we have to be like that sun and not care who we hurt and not care what we say and how we're going to be taken. It, we really have to be in this fury and this passion and be that roaring lion as the Leo is, right? Um, the other thing that we have to really focus on too, and I, in my notes, I'm just going through it, is making space for the endings in our life. Today, um, my shaman, Kaylin Rain and I, uh, we pre-recorded a video for a bitches Academy because his schedule is absolutely insane. I could not nail him down for a live. 
And I was just like, okay, if you could do it at two o'clock in the afternoon when everybody's at fucking work, like I'll just make it happen, you know? So I like went and did my podcast with Amanda Greco this morning. And then I like ran to the studio and I met with Kaylin and then I've done healing sessions all day. But one of the things that he was really talking about today, and you guys are going to get to watch this video on Friday is like, we're all each one of us, including myself, we're in different cabalarian cycles. Okay. And he's going to explain all this to you. So I'm not going to get too deep into it, but everyone here is at a different place in their lives. Some are mothers, some are crone, some are going through divorce. Some are just beginning a marriage. Like we're all in these different parts in our lives. Some of us are, have been healing for 20, 30 years. Some of us, it's like our first, it's our first session in a, in a bitch's Academy. We don't know what the fuck we're doing. Everyone here is at a different place in their lives. And what we have to really understand is everything has an ending and we have to allow ourselves to let those endings happen. So many of us, including myself, not so much anymore because I've been doing this healing work for a really long time, but so many of us here, we are just dragging the dead broke ass hoes around with us. And I'm not talking broke ass hoes like your friends. I'm talking about like the old broken fucking versions of yourself. And you guys refuse to let that woman go. And you think for some strange fucking reason that dragging this dead corpse around with you is actually for your highest, greatest good. And it's not, okay? And I'm telling you right now, if you don't make peace with endings in your life, in our lives, because there is more than one person here, then we are never going to be able to have the passion and the love and the joy that we're seeking. And that guess what? You don't even have to seek because everything is inside of you right now. Like it says in the Bible, the kingdom of heaven is within you now. And how do you enter the kingdom of heaven? Does anybody know? To be like a child, to be like a child, right? And that's what we have to do. We, it's, it's so funny because I was doing a healing session with someone today and I was saying how like the first part of your life when you're a kid, you cannot wait to be an adult, right? Like, you know, when you're little, you're like, I can't wait to be older and I, no one's going to tell me what the fuck to do. And I'm going to eat fruit roll-ups all day and fucking drink my juice boxes. It's going to be amazing. And no one's going to tell me what time to go to bed. And then the second half of your life, when you're an adult, you have to now remember how to be a child again. Isn't it such a fucking paradox? It's such a flip-flop, right? So making peace and space for the endings that are happening in our life, because the endings are actually, or the deaths, if you will, of the old us is what is going to create the life that we desire, right? And to make space for the new beginnings. I've had so many healing sessions in the last couple of days where people, um, you know, they were going through breakups and these types of things. And they're just like, but I love him. And like, he's a, and like, what the fuck happened? And, and, and I go, bitch, don't you understand? Like he was your person when you were like the seven versions of yourself back. And you're starting to like romanticize this fucking relationship with this person. And guess what? You holding on to his dead ass, broken down hoe corpse body is actually blocking the right person from for coming into your life that is going to be your absolute energetic vibrational frequency match. Kaylin was also talking about vibrational frequency today on our call. And I cannot wait for you guys to watch this because it was like blowing my mind. I'm like, he's such a freaking genius. But he was talking all about vibrational frequency. And it's the same thing. It's like if you are at a 555 five, five HZ vibrational frequency and you're trying to like hook up with a dude that's like a 222, it ain't gonna work. Now there's other bitches out there that are, are at his frequency and you need to just let him go there with that person because you're vibing in a fifth dimensional energy. You know, you guys are gonna love it. I'm gonna warn you, Kaylin is so smart that it's almost like Rain Man-esque, if you will. Like you really have to listen to what he's saying, but I'm telling you, if you can like not allow your like mind to overcomplicate what he's saying, it's so fucking amazing. Like beyond, like I was, when you watch the, when you watch the recording too, you'll see my mouth like the whole time. I'm like, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. 
he's changed my life, but he was talking about vibrational frequency, vibrational frequency with your home, vibrational frequency with your land that you live on, vibrational frequency of the car you drive, the clothes you wear, the people you hang out with, the foods you eat, everything. So letting those things that aren't your vibrational frequency match to just kind of like die and wither and fall away, right? This is also a time, guys, to exercise extreme compassion with yourself, extreme compassion. And the other thing that I was channeling today that I thought was really interesting was not seeking outside validation from other people, right? It's like, I don't, listen, I grew up, I had a very fucked up childhood and I always was trying to like make my parents like, love me through the things that I would do. You know, like, look at my report card. Do you love me now? Like, look at the crown that I won in this pageant. Do you love me now? Like, look at this, look at that. And it was like, I was missing the point where I didn't even love myself or validate myself. So we're looking for all this outside validation and we are not even loving and validating our own selves. And that is, at the end of the day, the most important thing ever. Teresa's saying that's a hard pill to swallow. It's the biggest fucking GNC horse pill of the century. You know what I'm talking about? Like those big ass, like multivitamins that like you choke on every time. That is exactly what it is. And Monique's saying that's a big one for me. And I was a performer my whole life. Same. Like, I remember like when I was a little girl and I talk about this all the time, like, like putting on a bunch of like things from my mom's closet and going on the fireplace and like doing like a whole like fucking good ship lollipop. Cause I just thought if I could entertain my family, it would like make my dad stop drinking and it would make my mom stop, you know, doing all the shit she would do. And guess what? It ain't gone to, because guess what? They're their own fucking human beings. Is anyone here feeling what I'm saying? Like, is anyone here really like, oh my God, yes. Like this is so resonating with me right now. Because when I channel, I do it from a place and I ask spirit, like, help me give these women that I'm going to talk to tonight, all the messages that they're desiring for their soul. Right. So let me just recap and then I'll keep going. So no looking for outside validation. Like if you show up, this is an example. If you're showing up on social media and you're doing reels and you're going live and you're like posting like awesome posts post them for yourself as a message to yourself and not for the outside people to like get likes and like comments because if you do it for yourself you're doing it from a place of your own love for yourself and not the outside world and guess what your posts will be better engagement people will share it more because it's a vibrational fucking frequency right hundred percent and like i always tell people that i business coach with. And if you don't feel like posting, don't fucking post because people can see and hear and smell and taste right through that shit too. Right. Jesus says, now, do we do these things until the new moon or just during the full moon in its shadows? You know, I like to carry things over to the new moon. That's just always how I've operated. So I don't have my schedule off the top of my head. Maybe someone here knows when the new moon is, but think two weeks from now is the new moon. It's just in my, it's in my planner. It's in my office. Um, but I, you know, today we're going to do a full moon ritual. I'm going to tell you guys what I want you to do. Um, and then watch what comes to fruition over the next couple of weeks as you, as you do this work, right? It's a really good question, Teresa. Falling in love with yourself. You know, I always share with you guys like my morning rituals and I, and in the morning for anybody here that's new, Every morning when I get up, right, I get my coffee ready and I put my, my little kettle on. And as the kettle is warming up, I light some Palo Santo and I say this three times through and I put the smoke all over my body and I just change the energy. And I always say, I am a queen, right? What else? Anybody else know it? Say the words. <laughs> I am a queen. I am a goddess. I am a child of the most high God. I will act as such. I will be treated as such. I am such. I want to see everyone mouthing it because it makes my nipples hard. Thank you very much. They can cut glass right now. I'm so excited. Because here's the deal. 
When I say that I'm a queen, I am a goddess, I am a child of the most high God. Thank you, Teresa. March 2nd is a new moon. Awesome. I'm not saying that because it's cute. I legit motherfucking believe that. Okay. I believe that. Okay. Because I have royal blood flowing through my veins as every other bitch does here, because you all are children of the most high God. And I don't care what God you believe in, but you are all children of the most high God. Okay. That being said, why do you think that God would create a bunch of humans to live mediocre lives? Do you think like God, like just like created like a bunch of us and then like a couple people, he was like, Ooh, you know, like that Kayla and that Lisa and that Sandra. Yeah. Like everyone else is going to have the, the bomb.com life, but those three bitches, no, they're going to live mediocre lives. They're going to struggle. They're going to think, no, everyone's birthright is to have an ambitious life. And that's what I call it. Right. Alien. I say that sometimes too. I, I go back and forth. I am a queen. I am royalty. I am, I, I will act as such. I'll be treated as such. I, this is what I desire three times. And so it is. And that's what I do too. And just depending on like, sometimes I'll say like, I'm a high priestess, I'm a medicine woman. It really just depends on what I'm feeling. Sometimes if I need healing, like I will, I will tap into like medicine woman energy. I will tap into like high priestess energy. I will tap into high God and like goddess energy or some kind of like a strong female archetype, you know, and I work with the different goddesses and I work with the different deities and every day you can do something, but every day, my desire for each and every one of you is to is to do, my ear is ringing so bad right now. So I know what I'm saying is like law. So when you affirm that every day, you start to really truly believe it. And as you affirm it and you put it out there, because that's what the Leo energy is all about, that regal royal energy, the vibrational frequency goes off to the universe and then all of a sudden, people start treating you like a queen. They start treating you like royalty. They start treating you like the goddess that you are or whoever you desire to be. Because your words create your reality. Your thoughts create your reality. Your deeds, thought, word, and deed, right? Creates your reality. So if you wake up in the morning and you roll over and you go, what fresh hell is waiting for me today? My husband just turned the lights on and me. I'll fucking kill him. Well, I thought it was God. I thought God was like, yes, my daughter, everything you're saying is right. I don't know what that God, God sounds like fucking Morgan Freeman. Well, sorry about that. <laughs> he actually is God, like in all the movies, right? So that's probably normal. Um, but that's what you're doing. If you're saying like, oh, what fresh hell's waiting for me this morning? What the fuck do you think your life is going to be like? Your life is going to be hell all day long, Right. It's like when you step in the puddle and then you break the heel of your shoe and then you, and then you run your pantyhose, right? You've ha we've all had these days, right? You split your pants, you drop coffee on your white shirt and like, it just keeps going and going and going. Just like that, it can go the opposite way. If you're affirming every morning when you wake up and that you're a queen and you're royalty and you're a goddess and you're all these things, and that is the energy of this Leo full moon. Jess says, I always scold people around me who talk like that now. You know what? And good for you. And I'll tell you one thing right now. It's not okay because that shit infiltrates your auric field. And when people talk like that around me, it literally like makes me fucking clutch my pearls. Like I'm like, oh no, not today, Satan. You're not going to talk like that around me because I'm working so motherfucking hard on keeping my vibrational frequency high and being the, the most ambitious HBIC that I can be. And guess what? I'm not letting it in. I'm not allowing it. You know, I will, I get like crazy around that shit. Like I literally be like, I rebuke this. Like I will not let it in. And thank God you, you're doing that. And I hope that everyone takes a little lesson from Jess Kaplan today, because we should call people to the carpet. Like if you want to fuck with me, you got to get on the bus or under the bus. There's no off and on. Like you're on it or you're under it. Sorry. Mm. Exactly. Get that negative ass shit away. Someone at the gym said it. I, I always get hurt. Then guess what? It's like you're rubbing your magic lamp. The genie in the bottle comes out and says, oh, and your wish is my command. And that's how it, and that's how it happens, right? I have had a lot of healing sessions lately where people just like, I never, I'll never find the right person or I always get cheated on or, and I'm like, yeah, 
And guess what? The next guy will do it and the next guy will do it and the next guy will do it and in perpetuity. Or you can say that has been my reality up until now, but I choose to change it. And I choose to heal this part of me, right? Because remember, like they're gonna keep showing up with different masks until you learn your damn lesson and you remember who the fuck you are. All right. So let's do some little bit of journaling today around this energy. And then I'd like to finish up with some sound healing for a little bit. Lily just said, we won't break an arm. And I was like, stop it, erase. Mm -hmm. It's like the, um, in Florence Scovel Shins, my word is my wand. Your word is your wand. And guess what? When you're spelling and you're speaking, you are casting spells. Okay. What do you think Jesus did when he would speak the word over people, right? You're casting a spell and you can cast good ones or you can be a fucking dark magic witch and cast bad ones. And guess what? That don't work because that shit comes back to you tenfold. No, thank you. Right. I only speak victory into myself and to the people around me. And guess what? If people can't get on the bus, it's time to rethink your, your, your circle. You know, I would rather have no friends and be al al alone and just be with me than have a circle of friends around me that are like negative, always complaining and just like, wow, wow, wow. I can't. And guess what? Y'all know me. I'll cut a bitch real quick. I mean, I have like a whole chapter in my book about it. I'm not afraid. And I actually, it's funny because, you know, we say like, we're alone, but you're not alone. You have yourself. That's all I got to say about that. All right. So let's talk about this. In what areas of my life is it time to shake off like a, like a lion coming out of the water, like shake, 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 shake. In what areas of my life is it time to shake off an outworn allegiance in order to honor my light. Now, what is an allegiance? An allegiance is anything that you are connected to, whether it's a person, an outdated thought, some kind of hypnotic rhythm, some kind of drifter energy or mentality. And please, if something comes up to you right away, I love bravery, I love when people share. So please share it in the comments. Like, what is something that you're just like, I got to like, get rid of this. This is no longer serving my highest, greatest good. It is an out, is it like an outdated, worn out allegiance? Um, a lot of people will say, I'll give you an example. A lot of people will say like, but it's my family and I'm obligated. No, you are not. No, you are not. You are not obligated. I fucking loathe the word obligation because guess what obligation is that let me ask you a question is the word obligated does that make you feel high vibe or does that make you feel low vibe when someone says i'm obligated to do this thing that's low motherfucking vibes so if you are saying i'm obligated to do something or this is my allegiance or i took an oath or like you know the old rigmarole where it was like but it's your family and you can't no fuck that noise I don't care who it is. If they are holding you down into the shit pit, like crabs in a bucket and you're trying to crawl out and they keep pulling you back in, no one's fault except your own. So Jess is saying she wants to break up with emotional eating. I love it. Oh my God, Teresa, my sister. Well, you know, I know who that is very, very well. So God bless that mess. And you know what? You can still love her. You can still love her. Did you guys listen to, I know this is like random, but did you guys listen to the playlist that I gave you, that I created for you guys called Ambitious Anthems yet? How fucking good is that music? And like Tony Cole, when she's like, um, the, I don't know the name of the song. I think it's like, my healing is not my purpose. I think that's the, the song. And she's like, I am here to love. I am here to enjoy food. I am here to enjoy like sex. I'm here to enjoy like life. Like that is actually what we're here to do. So when like to Jess's point, if you are using food as an emotional crutch, 
Is that high vibrational? No. So let's go a little deeper into that because I know a lot of us here, including myself, are emotional eaters. When you're eating emotionally and you're using food as a crutch, you could be eating the most organic high-end food, but because you're using the food to emotionally eat, it actually lowers the vibrational frequency of your food. So you're better off like just eating a buck and bag of Doritos and just like living your best life and laughing while you're doing it. You know, like, it's like, when you ever see someone's like, oh, I have to eat this salad. What the fuck? This salad. Oh, I don't want to eat salad, but I want to be skinny. And they're eating the fucking salad and you're literally spelling over your food and then you're putting it into your mouth. And guess what? You get illness, sickness, and disease from it. Or you could be just like a sick fuck and just be like eating a big old bowl of fucking bolognese and just be like, oh my God, this is so good. This is the best thing I ever ate. And it might not even be organic. It might be from fucking Olive Garden. I don't know where the fuck you crazy people are going, but like it could be higher vibrational frequency than the organic shit you bought from fucking Whole Foods because what you're spelling into it and over it, right? I know, I'm a genius. That's why I get paid the big bucks, <laughs> right? Okay, so the next question here is, in what ways am I being called to focus my energy in order to pursue my true passion? Remember, I was talking about the passion, the passion. Leos are passionate, right? They're fiery. And this is all about finding your passion, right? Just because your like father wanted you to be like a lawyer or a doctor, that might not be, you might have been a lawyer and been a doctor and that's not your shit anymore. And you might be like, Hey, I want to do some, I want to be a sound healing practitioner. I want to be a yoga instructor. I want to fucking pull tarot cards for a living. I don't know what that is, but guess what? That's passion. So in what ways am I being called to focus my energy in order to pursue my true passion? Anybody, does anything come up for anybody like off the top of their heads? Um, remember I was talking on the app um, the other day about just like streamlining my business because I can have more passion and I can have more joy if my business is tighter and smaller and more tribal, right? That's my focus from, that's my passion is like, how can I help these people more and like have more fun doing it? right? So if anything's coming up, feel free to put it in the chat. And the last question here is what lessons learned must I carry forward into the next season of my life in order to step up into the person I know I can be? So what lessons learned must I carry forward into the next season of my life in order to step up into the per person I know that I can be? That's a really hard question. It was funny today because I was, <laughs> I was doing a podcast with Amanda Greco and we were kind of like rapping a little bit before we started our podcast. And I was telling her, I was like, oh my God, Amanda, I'm so fucking stressed out because I overbooked my day. Like I overbooked the fuck out of my day. And I'm, you know, I'm going on vacation. So I'm trying to like put 10 pounds of shit right in a five pound bag. Like that's what we all do. We like beat the shit out of ourselves before we actually have vacation. It's so fucking stupid. It's like one of my worst traits. And I always try to like overdo it, overdo it, overdo it. So like I overscheduled my day so bad. And she looked at me, she goes, do you ever think of like the bitch that you are when you schedule it is gonna, is going, no, the bitch that you know that you're gonna be on the day that you have to do the things that you scheduled. Don't you wish you could go and talk to that bitch that scheduled your shit and be like, what the fuck are you doing to yourself? You know, you're gonna hate yourself on the day you actually actually do all this shit. And I was like, oh my God, Amanda, it's so fucking true. So she actually taught me a lesson. It's like, Kitty, doing more doesn't mean you're more valuable. It doesn't actually doing less, you accomplish more in so many ways, right? Monique says, I've noticed recently that I have been very mindful of who I allow into my soul transformation community and who I will have as clients. Boundaries, honey, who are you talking to, girl? Yeah. Like I, I've had a bunch of clarity calls in the last week and like people were like, I want to join a business academy right now. I will give you the money. I will pay in full, right? Like, $2,000 is a lot of money. 
in my opinion. I don't know what you guys think so, but I think two thousand two grand is a lot of money. And I was just like, in my head, I'm like, so like the 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 devil on my shoulder was like, just take it. Who cares? And then the angel was like, no, bitch. You know that bitch gonna fuck everything up. She's gonna bring all the bad vibes into your shit. And you're going to be pissed. And then you're going to have to fire her ass anyway. And I was like, you're right, bitch. And I said, no, because I respect fiercely and protect fiercely like the lion, my community here, right? And maybe like, it's not that I won't work with them, but maybe I work with them in a one-on-one capacity where they, where they can't spew all their unhealed shit on my community, you know? Cause I can handle that for myself, but a lot of you guys are on your own healing journey. You don't need more shit on your plate to look at, to see, right? So that's a huge lesson, Monique, like that. And you should be really proud of yourself because I know a lot of people that are in the same industry as us, like in the healing arts, and they will just take any Tom, Dick and Harry off the side of the road just to get their money. And it's like, no, no, it's just not good. Right. It does. It just makes you resentful a hundred percent. You know, and it's funny because, you know, I just said to spirit today, I said, spirit, I know I was being a fucking ding-a-ling when I scheduled this day, but I've had worse days. I mean, if you guys knew me back in the dizzle, when I would have spray tan a palooza, when I was, <laughs> when I was the official sponsor like Miss Universe, Miss USA, Miss America, and I would spray tan 50 girls in 24 hours. I will show you a picture. I was looked like. I, I had like, my face was all fucked up. Like I, I had like all this black stuff around my face, but then here, because I wore a mask was white. And then my hands would look like de they were dead. Like I looked like Mr. Deed's foot. And then my feet, because I could not wear shoes when I spray tan, cause I would get like blisters. Cause the way I have to go up and down their body, I would have to go barefoot. And my feet were black on the bottom. I will find the picture and I will show you. I, I was like this, like with my feet, and I think of that shit and I'm like, okay, Katie, you've done worse. You've done worse, but like, I don't want to fucking be that bitch. That's Katie like 10 fucking years ago. And every so often we dip our toe back in the Katie 1.0 pond. And then it, you go like, what, are, what the fuck are you doing? So I just said to spirit today, spirit, just protect me. Like, give me strength and like, make me, and guess what? Two of my clients canceled, did, didn't show up, which was whatever. And then I, I ended up getting to do things at the studio that I had been putting off because I had this extra time. And I was like, wow, that was like, it worked out because I trusted in spirit, right? And I guess what? I won't do that to my schedule anymore. Like if I look at my schedule now for the next couple of months, it's like not crazy like that. And I will not, because you know what it is? I, I know a lot of you guys understand because you guys do it too. So like, say you have like an extra hour at the end of your day and you're just like, you know what? I'll just put the person in. I'll just accommodate them. Like, cause I, and then what? You fucking hate yourself for it. It's not healthy. And it's not my fault that people fucked up their schedule when my schedule is not fucked up, but I love them and I want to help them. But like, what the fuck are you doing, Katie? You're just like raping your ass with no lube all day long. And then you're like, why am I so tired? I feel like a bag of smashed assholes. You know what? You deserve it. I'm talking to myself, not you guys. Just says, that's a great real idea. Not sure how to execute it, but you know, everyone can relate 110%. Teresa says, set aside more time for me, more self-care, more time to relax and recenter. Because remember in the rest and the relaxation, that is when the fucking real shit happens. That's when the integration happens. That's when the transmutation happens. That's when the resonance happens. That is when like the reclamation happens. It's not happening in the doing. It's happening in the being. <laughs> burnt out Monique was not fun. Oh my God. Right, Monique? No one likes the burnt out bitch. It's like a real fucking thing. <laughs> okay. She says, my, <clears throat> my students and parents can be energy suckers. The boundaries are firm this year. It, it just, it is what it is. And it doesn't mean you don't love them. And it doesn't mean you don't want to serve them and give them value and do all the things. But it's like, you have to, like, you have to, have to, have to have fierce boundaries. Like you guys know, it's one of the six life makers. Reiki is going to help you so much with that. Absolutely. When you become even Reiki one, you start looking at the world in a, such a different way. Like it just, something clicks. Like as soon as you're, as soon as that Reiki energy, like starts coming through you, you're just like, Oh, I'm a bad bitch. Like no one's going to fuck with my fucking shit. That's actually when I became a Reiki 
even just Reiki one, but I'm a Reiki master teacher. When I started going through that, I, that was when the most growth in my life happened. Like the most spiritual growth in my life happened when I, when I started doing my Reiki journey, 110%. Okay. So let's finish with a nice sound healing. And then, um, I feel like I'm super out of it guys. And I, and I'm not going to apologize because I'm not sorry for anything, but I, you guys know, I never like, don't know what's going on in my life, but I've just had a lot of like medical stuff going on this week and I have the stuff tomorrow. So I know that some of you guys were like, where's tarot Tuesday. And I'm like, I literally just couldn't pull that out of my ass this week. I just, there wasn't enough hours in the day. And then literally, I don't even know like when calls are this week or anything. So <laughs> Kim, if you're listening, help a bitch out. But on Friday, we will be dropping the video for Kaylin. So you guys are going to love that. I know there's some TA hours this week, which is going to be great too. Um, and really remember, you don't have to always be educating yourself. Sometimes it's like, take the education and let it integrate. Because I feel like, and I'm very much like this too. I always want to be learning more and more and more and more and more. And sometimes that's not healthy. Sometimes it's like sitting with what you already learned is actually what's going to help you so much, you know? Oh, I know. Thank you. I totally was going to text you today. And then like, I, you know, shit got crazy. Like I said, thank you, Monique, for doing that. I appreciate you. Um, yep. TA Joe Friday, 11 Eastern standard time. Thank you, Aileen. And then we'll also drop the call. Um, we'll also drop the call with Kaylin on Friday. That's pre-recorded. And just so you guys know, a lot of the stuff that we're going to be doing going forward is going to be pre-recorded because I've got a lot of feedback from a lot of you saying like, I, if I miss like a couple of days of calls, I feel like such a loser and I feel so behind. So I'm going to try to like do a lot more pre-recorded education calls so that you guys can do it at your own leisure and not feel like, oh, fuck, if I miss the call on Tuesday night, then I'm a loser and I'm behind. Because that's not what I want for anyone here. I want you guys to always feel like, you know, this is an academy and you're learning as you go and you don't always have to be learning. Sometimes the biggest learning is when you're integrating the stuff that you've already learned, right? Okay, so let's get comfy. Um, I'm going to play on the bowls for a little bit and I will wake you guys up. And um, I chose certain bowls today. I don't have all my bowls out here. I just chose certain bowls because I was just feeling that vibe of that energy more. Um, so the bowls today are all like super high vibrational bowls. Most of them are angel bowls. So we're going to be working in our upper chakras from our heart, our throat, our third eye, and our crown and our soul star and less in the lower chakras because I just feel like Leo is the sun. We're up in the universe. We're not so grounded because it's just not the energy of like what we're working with with tonight's full moon. And y'all know what to do on your full moon. Write down all the shit that no longer serves your highest, greatest good. Get your asses out in the yard, burn that shit, let it go. Charge your crystals, make your moon water and all that good stuff. But really the real work is your um, journal prompts that I gave you just knowing the energies and then doing some sound healing. Okay. So I'm going to get the video so you can actually, you know, obviously you don't have to watch. I'd rather you not watch me play and actually relax and I will wake you all up when it's time. Okay.
breath as possible. Just kind of come back to the room that you're in, wiggling your fingers, wiggling your toes. Just taking some nice deep breaths in through your nose. Out through your mouth. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. In through your nose. Out through your mouth. And then when you're ready, just slowly open your eyes. Take a nice deep breath. Sing all of it out. Inhaling. And exhaling. Inhaling. Exhaling. How'd that feel? Hot damn. I know the bulls are on fire, huh? Whew. So good. Such good stuff. Did anything come up for anyone that you thought was odd or like interesting? You're welcome. I always like to know. I went into like some weird trance when I was doing it. I was like, where am I? When I came out of it, I was like, whoa, that was weird. Usually I'm very cerebral when I'm doing stuff for you guys, but I don't know. Maybe I just need a little, I need a little medicine myself. Monique says, someone was doing a spiral on top of my crown. Ooh, jaw was tingly and my third eye was, was my entire head. Oh, cool. That's amazing. Yeah, Teresa's saying, clearing her throat a lot. Absolutely, 100%. Yeah, I was, I was going, I mean, all of that was throat chakra stuff. You know, my indigo bowl th throat chakra, my palladium bowl throat chakra. Yeah, so much throat stuff. Absolutely. Thinking about the number seven, that's cool. I like the number seven. Um, Kaylin was talking about sevens a lot on our call today. That's interesting. Because seven doesn't resonate with me at all. But today I was like, hmm, seven. Nice to meet you. Not like that's so bad. Because I usually see fours in a lot, four, 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 11, 11. Melissa saying, I felt it in my head a lot. Yep, that's good. That's a good sign because everything we were working on was heart and above, which is awesome. And remember, anytime you feel stuff in your head and in your crown, it's a divine connection with create, creator, right? Intuition, seeing the unseen, right? That's always the energy. I love it. So healing, clearing my heart. I'm so glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, my rhodochrosite bowl, the big pink one, that's all heart chakra. That's like the most, in my opinion, that's like, for me, that's like such good medicine. Remember, because the bowls are medicine. And so you might not see or feel like them working, but they are working on you and they'll continue to work on you like even after your session. Um, if anybody's ever had a healing session with me where I've played the bowl on their bodies. So I actually put the bowl on your physical body and I open the chakras with the bowl. It's like blow your head off. It's so freaking deep. Kim says, I felt deep in my heart and it kept clearing my throat. Good. So that see, it's like the energies were really working on you and you're really attuned to the energies of the bowl, which is awesome. So does anybody have any questions about the moon that maybe I didn't answer or any comments or anything, I'm here. I am here for you. Nothing. I feel like someone has a question. Um, don't forget to guys, like for your um, Ambitious Academy, the TAs, you know, they're there to hold space for you. They're there to educate. So if you can make those times, like, you know, support the girls and it's always nice. Just even if you could hop on for 10 minutes, um, Christina saying bowls on the stomach attributed to my exorcism. <laughs> Christina, Christina and Kim Barriano came to my house for a healing session. <laughs> and I was like, okay, guys, like after your healing session, we're all going to go out and have fun. Right. And then poor Christina 
I, she had a legit physical reaction and, and it was not a good situation, but guess what? After she felt like a million bucks, Christina came out of the healing session and she was fucking like green. She really was. She really was. But I have people that I do healing sessions on all the time and they vomit, they shit their pants. Like that's just not everyone. So don't be afraid. But like, if you have a lot of stuff that's stuck in your lower chakras, it will physically come out of you like real, not, not like three dimensionally. Right. Oh, thank you, Teresa. I'm, I'm going to light my OB up like a motherfucking Christmas tree. She does not know what's coming to her tomorrow. I am like, so over being gaslit and I'm, and I am such a crusader for women and it's not okay for any of us to ever feel like the medical world has failed us because guess what? You work for me. I don't work for you. I pay your bills. So she better wear her fucking rubber undies because I'm going to fuck her life tomorrow. Let me tell you. Aileen says, is it okay to update my ambitious affirmation tonight? Yes. It's a very powerful time to do that. So absolutely. Christina was great. I know poor little thing. She really was, but Christina's like a new human after all that. She's like a different person. I don't even recognize the Christina that once was, you know, Aileen says, I remember having a call soon after that visit, Kim. Oh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Channel that lion. That's all we can do right now, man. All right. Great session tonight. I'm so proud of you guys. I will, um, I'll keep you in the loop of what's transpiring with my, with my um, OB appointment tomorrow. Hopefully we'll get some really clear cut, concise answers so I can like I just medical limbo is like never, and I'm not a sick person. You guys know me, like I'm not a sick person. And I just feel like the last year has gone, been like one thing after another. And I'm just like done with it. So I'm like, let's move on, honey. And says, thank you. And I will be thinking of you tomorrow, kick some ass medical limbo blows. It really does. And I'm like, I'm like, I'm not allowing it anymore. I've allowed it for too long, you know? Cause right. We're all, we're all raised to think like God, like doctors are God. And it's like, honestly, my mother who is a nurse, she told me two years ago, Katie, you have fibroids. My mother had a full hysterectomy when she was 29 years old. And I was like, you don't know what you're talking about. Shut the fuck up. And guess what? She was right. She was right. I am. I am taking my power back tomorrow. And Dr. Murphy is going to motorboat me by the time I'm done with her. Just, just put it out there. Thank you guys. I love you so much. And I will see you over the, on the app. And I love, um, I love our conversation um, in the app as well. The Ambitious Academy conversation is fucking giving me life. Poor Aubrey, man. Like what the fuck? What the actual fuck? I just skimmed that today. And I was like, I can't get into this right now because I, I have to like, my day is just crazy. Um, but thank you guys for just showing up for each other and loving on each other so much. And before I go, I just want to welcome Melissa Gutierrez. She's new to Ambitious Academy. Everybody, you were so kind welcoming her. Um, welcome to the Bitchsterhood, Melissa. And um, we're going to have so much fun. Oh, BTW, before I go, before I forget, I know this is like super far out, but Bitchapalooza and, Bitch and Ambitious Academy graduation is going to be the weekend of January 6th, 7th, and 8th of 2023. Um, Kim Fox and I have created um, like payment plans. So if you guys want to break the payment down for that weekend over the course of the next like six months year, you can do that. So we'll be coming out with that next week, but please like, I know it's like so far away, but it's really not. I mean, think about it. Like a year goes by so quick. Um, we have our DJ. I got um, uh, his name is DJ RDV. I don't know, Teresa, you probably know DJ RDV. He's like this He's like a big time Boston DJ, but he, yeah, he's, we're going to fist pump. Um, and he's going to be there on Saturday night. We're going to have a fucking dance party. We're going to dress up like fucking care bears. And we're just going to like 69 each other on the dance floor. I am so excited. You guys, it's got like going to be the best time ever. Um, so if you can get your planner out and plan that weekend, because it's going to be amazing. Yes, Monique, bring, bring the body glitter. I'm going to, I'll bring the ecstasy. I've never rolled in my life and I don't plan on doing it because I have to have control of myself because I'm a control freak, but 
I don't know if you guys want to trip balls, like we can go outside and lick mushrooms or something. I don't know, but it's going to be fun. All right. I love you guys. Um, and I will keep you in the loop and thank you for being so supportive and happy full moon in Leo blessings to each and everyone. And so it is mm -hmm. bye y'all.